Take your time. Take your time. जर्नल रीडिंग को आप सैटरडे टॉपिकॉर्मल कम्युनिकेशन यूजली लाइन to some extent by granulation tissue which runs outwards from the anorectal lumen uh, the internal opening to an external opening in the skin of the perineum or buttock or rarely in women to the vagina uh, it comes under a uh, set of uh, diseases called the anorectal suppurative diseases and anorectal suppurative diseases uh, can be in an acute form which we commonly known as anal or uh, anorectal abscesses or it could be in a chronic form uh, which we will be discussing today that is fistula in anal what is exception in your definition what is exception in your fistula in anal there is exception mm. which which nowadays we come across very commonly you are supposed to know that sometimes uh, there might not be an Uh, an external opening also what do you call it uh. submucous abscess or submucous fistula what is that uh, submucous fistula is uh, uh, in the uh, submucosal folds that is the anal columns that we had discussed in the anatomy in the last lecture uh, mm. in uh, when the abscess develops in the submucous space i have a diagram that i will be sharing later yes agree. Uh, and it uh, opens into the rectum mm. uh, but uh, it does not communicate externally into the perianal skin so okay. it will form um, it will have an internal opening but it will not have an external okay so ideally speaking the word should be submucous abscess mm. but why it is known as a submucous fistula because the it doesn't act the the point here is that what do you call perianal abscess or ischio rectal abscess what uh, is that so there, there, there are uh, several spaces in the um, in surrounding the anum anal canal and the rectum and depending on their location they are classified as um, perianal ischio rectal submucous abscess but yes agreed but the difference is there is no external neither internal opening Hmm. that is a by definition abscess does not have any communication you understand neither in internal not external that you call as a abscess your exception is there is always a internal opening then why there are two terminology abscess and fistula so an abscess might or might not uh, cause a fistula an no 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 the point here is that actually it is the same thing when you call a submucous abscess or submucous fistula but the point here is that you should understand acute. whenever there is a development of submucous abscess it is not acute it is chronic there is always a internal opening which sometimes communicates sometimes doesn't when it communicate it empty so there is a filling and emptying of the abscess so it is not a abscess in true sense that's why people call it submucous fistula still there is some controversy you should keep in mind that some people still believe that it should be called submucous abscess and not the fistula because it is not a fistula in true sense there is no external communication with the lumen when it is reverse what do you call it there is a external opening but there is no internal opening that 
that is a sinus perianal that is a sinus why it is important to discuss sinus in your fistula in anu so because uh, clinically when we see a patient uh, the most obvious uh, sign is the presence of an external opening yes. but we have to see if there is an internal opening or not but if you don't find internal opening what will it mean so uh, there might be an internal opening which we could not diagnose clinically exactly. but, so remember one thing there is a practically nothing like a perianal sinus very rarely and usually perianal sinus is a post drainage of perianal abscess which is in healing phase so the most of the time the actual diagnosis of sinus is made clinically which will not be supported by investigation previously there were more cases where it was supposed to be perianal sinus because clinically or any other methods internal opening was not found but the in era of truss and mri and fistulogram you should look for a internal opening always and most of the time 90% of cases you will find a very small tiny internal opening you understand so keep this thing in your mind that perianal sinus is a myth rarely you really find a perianal sinus unless it is a post operative you have a drained drained the perianal abscess and it is healing in that circumstances sometimes there can be a sinus or rarely dressing is not done properly or a tuberculosis those are the condition when you may not find internal opening but it is that so remember the when you say fistula in ano these are the exception you should keep in mind when you do not find internal opening you may call it sinus but by investigator support even paraoperatively there may be internal opening so true perianal sinus may actually be fistula similarly when there is no external opening but there is internal opening you call it submucous fistula abscess is not a wrong term but it is a misnomer like that okay etiology of a fistula in you know uh, it is a, um, a cryptoglandular hypothesis um, is mostly recognized to uh, uh, to cause Uh, to be an etiology for uh, development of fistula it suggests that uh, uh, that all the fistula follow uh, an intersphincteric uh, anal gland infection uh, so there are anal glands that are present uh, in the intersphincteric plane that is between the external and internal sphincter and due to um, plugging of the ducts of these glands uh, collection and uh, obstruction of these glands um, which later become infected an abscess forms and this abscess ruptures inside as well as outside forming an internal and an external opening and resulting in a tract forming a fistula yes this is the one hypothesis you have very rightly written why you have written word hypothesis so because it is pro proposed that uh, this is a cause but we do not know for sure why what is wrong <laughs> so many abscess or fistula occur without this how will you explain when the fistula is quite lateral without any perianal abscess if it is a ischiorectal abscess it does not follow this pattern there are many abscess which are extra sphincteric not the in intersphincteric and only 60% it is proven only 60% of the fistula have a origin in the anal gland do you understand the 40% you do not find this so it is a hypothesis not a proven so same principle follows the if you drain a perianal abscess all patient does not develop fistula mm -hmm. do you understand why it is a simple abscess and it is not necessary convert into fistula do you understand that's why it is a hypothesis not a proven but 60% of it there is some kind of infection if this is the cause all fistula should be low and all fistula should be small but it is not like that there is a complex factor but this is one of the factor that's why it is hypothesis okay um this non specific idiopathic etiology it, um it is like if uh, fistula is developing um in this manner it is more common in men and it is mostly seen in third fourth and fifth decade of life uh risk factors for development of uh, fistula are previous perianal abscess formation as we have discussed other risk factors are uh, crohn's disease uh, diabetes mellitus tuberculosis uh, lymphogranuloma venereum actinomycosis uh, congenital uh, rectal duplication trauma uh, radiotherapy and uh, 
immunocompromised individuals such as in case of hiv uh, and other causes of infection and malignancy so actually you have taken malignancy here it is a separate one malignancy on its own even without immunocompromise is a risk the cause is not immunocompromised in malignancy what is cause uh, sir a long term uh, um a long term what which kind of malignancy present with fistula in anorectum renal um uh... renal it is a mass actually so colloid carcinoma many time may present it like that nowadays that theory is also in doubt but you should keep in mind that fistula on its own can be that so there are two things one is fistula is there and converted into malignancy mm. second is a malignancy there and which has presented as a fistula but malignancy is one of the out of all this what is the commonest apart from non specific in tuberculosis. our country still tuberculosis. tuberculosis because we are reading the western books tuberculosis is not given that important for us tuberculosis is still that remember apart from non specific all other fistula whatever you heard it and maybe trauma all other fistula what is the typical feature crohn's tuberculosis lymphogranuloma actinomycosis radiotherapy immunocompromise what is typical almost always multiple fistula always and so it is should be wise you should say when there is a presence of multiple fistula or recurrent fistula you should look for a cause apart from a non specific still 70 80% of the fistula are non specific only 10 20% depends upon the geographical distribution it can be other thing lymphogranuloma and actinomycosis are very very rare rectal duplication is altogether we should not be discussing it here because it is more of a congenital variant and it is different thing and it is not included in a true sense in our fistula right so common is tuberculosis crohn's non specific malignancy um just a brief uh, discussion of the clinical anatomy um i have just described the um, several spaces that are present in the perianal area so uh, perianal and uh, rect perirectal area these are the submucous this is the submucous space uh, for uh, which uh, in which submucous abscess develops uh, this area is the um, perianal space and uh, in posteriorly it is also known as the superficial postenal space uh, above the enococcygeal ligament and below the levator ana is the deep postenal space and um, above the levator ana is the um, supra levator space i have another slide to uh, describe the spaces uh, so this is the supra levator space uh, this is the ischiorectal space between the two sphincters is the intersphincteric space uh, uh, this is the submucous space and uh, this is the perianal space and these are also locations of uh, several uh, ish, uh, perianal and uh, perirectal abscesses uh, and posteriorly there is the presacral space uh, deep postenal space supralevator space and uh, posterior perianal space which is the superficial postenal space um here we have uh, described a little bit just just a moment go back one slide back okay so how many fish space nahi nahi forward how many spaces are there in perianal region you have described tell me the number of spaces because that is the most important point here um, there are different spaces here which are the important spaces in perianal region sir mainly we can describe it as four spaces yes uh, submucous space uh, yes. perianal space um ischiorectal space and supralevator Sure. there is a one which is known as a pararectal so supralevator supralevator is higher up but even lower down there can be a pararectal rarely particularly when there is a transfricting fistula pararectal is a another thing you should keep in mind one go next hmm uh in the, uh, this uh, this shows the this uh, spreading of uh, pus that can occur 
in the uh, e, uh, in the ischio anal or ischio rectal space it uh, spreads in a horseshoe shaped fashion uh, once it reaches this space mm -hmm. go back 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 mm. what else you are seeing here what you have drawn which is a very important structure you have shown space sphincter you are going to describe later on sir i have not included the anatomy in this ha ah, but nahi because in this case for fistular classification, yes, classification this is have... that you are going to do right but here you have shown it very well just show it what you have drawn here which will be very useful for a student particularly with marker what you have shown is a intersphincteric space excellent so just for everybody's knowledge if there is a perianal abscess you can see this which is approximately you can say a space external sphincter extend laterally internal sphincter stops higher up so there is a area sir can't hear you yeah i even i can't hear by my uh, i think he got disconnected or ha huh? i think sharing has gone can you can you repeat yeah 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 you are now oh hmm. something happened so this is the Asa, area where i want it cursor mm -hmm. ha bring the cursor at the perianal space nahi on the first first figure ha that is a lower down lower down that is ha so that you can see the external sphincter and internal sphincter in that particular area you will find the perianal when the fistula occurs almost always is peers only internal sphincter mm. ah so you can see that so that will develop what we normally call is internal or uh, intersphincteric fistula this is for understanding similarly you have shown ischio rectal abscess mm. go lower down lower down up to skin up to skin right so this is a potential ischio rectal space do you understand so if the abscess occur here and it has to have a internal opening how will it happen um, it will have to pierce both the sphincter hmm. so that is what is known as a transsphincteric hmm. right so here another important point look at the intersphincteric space do you understand what are you seeing in inter intersphincteric space it will if you go trace it upward tr trace it upward that mark go let it go let it go ha ah, that's the space so it will enter the pelvic rectal space without actually injuring the diaphragm, yeah. pelvic diaphragm do you understand and this is the one of the common presentation you should keep in mind and in these cases there may not be need for a set on now look at the ischio rectal go to ischio rectal now trace it upward and let it communicate with the so it will have to puncture the pelvic diaphragm and they are more dangerous so that's the basic thing you should understand there is a third thing which is important which is known as a u shaped fistula do you understand the external opening is somewhere in skin show it just lateral to perianal that is the space and internal opening is anal gland show it ha huh. so if it is straight it become intersphincteric fistula but what will happen it will go higher up straight from skin go straight straight outside 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 the sphincter go up go up 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 ne up ha huh. go up go up go up ha huh. now go medially go medially medially come down come down and open at the anal gland mm -hmm. so that is what is known as a most frustrating fistulas occur this way u shape when you see internal opening fine it looks lower down you see external opening it is lower down but actually it is traversing higher up and coming down this type of fistula are common in recurrent understand this point or usually iatrogenic trauma Should I move? Ah, uh, carry on. Uh, clinical features of uh, fistula. 
uh, intermittent uh, purulent discharge which may be bloody occasionally uh, there is pain and uh, temporary relief of pain occurs when the pus discharges uh, pruritus can be present because sorry, of sorry beta sorry go back one slide i wanted to highlight one more point sorry yes. similarly you can see here what are you seeing here lower down lower figure yes that is a deep post anal space understand this point and what is that ligament anocoxygenal ligament what is significance of that ligament it uh, supports the uh, it supports the re uh, uh, rectum and anal canal right support is fine for our point of view it is very tough structure right and we usually need to cut when we are doing apr that is a point potential of space is there but for us it is important is that if if any infection outside it understand this point that what we call that any infection outside it at the tip of coccyx of higher up ah that way what do you call it outside it is uh, will be perianal abscess no this is perianal i am talking higher up that is site of pilonidal pilonidal sinus understand this point so it is extremely rare that pilonidal sinus will cause the perianal fistula because of anocoxygenal ligament usually infection never spreads inside there is a one point you should that is if it spreads how will it spread if at all just look at it what is the common site of pilonidal sinus Uh, uh, tip of the tailbone. Uh, show it. Show it. Here. No, no, yeah. Ha, right, right. So, if the infection extend into perianal region, where will it go? Trace it. Go, go down. You are doing fine. Right. Go, 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 go. So that's where it will go. It will not go. So any fistula, if at all occur with perianal F, peri, sorry, pilonidal sinus. it will always be low fistula understand this point mm -hmm. this is a very important point rarely it do occur but it will always occur subcutaneous do you understand so this point you should keep in mind continue so kashvi why both sided ischiorectal abscess communicates usually if it is one side it you may found it, it uh, its communication to the opposite side right so that is yes. the because it communicates subcutaneously only it is a loose areolar tissue posterior mm -hmm. ring and because of that you may find out some blind tract also on the opposite side right okay continue uh, clinical features uh, of a fistula and you know intermittent purulent discharge which may be bloody uh, pain uh, temporary relief of pain occurs when the pus discharges pruritus uh, may be present because of the discharge and there is uh, generally a previous episode of uh, acute anorectal uh, anorectal abscess uh, that settled in completely either spontaneously with antibiotics or was surgically drained um also there is a point that uh, if there is uh, if we observe that there is passage of flatus or feces through the external opening it is suggestive of a rectal internal opening and not an anal internal opening why because um, once it has across the um, once it has crossed the rectum um, uh, normally so anal canal remains collapsed and it is not having gas collection into the anal canal mm -hmm. normally so this distinctibility is usually into the rectum and so when patient passes flatus usually it is into the rectum right okay Uh, moving on with the classification um, pax classification is used to classify fistula in ano into four main subgroups intersphincteric transphincteric suprasphincteric and extrasphincteric uh, so intersphincteric uh, is a uh, um, i'll just describe them uh, the subgroups first and then uh, i'll classify them further um, so intersphincteric will basically have an external opening uh, in the perianal skin a uh, perianal skin and uh, it will only cross the internal sphincter 
it will not cross the external sphincter uh transsphincteric will cause both internal and external sphincter so external opening will be a little further from the anal verge and it will cross both the sphincters and open into the anal canal um then uh, uh extra sphincteric is when the external opening is uh, uh in in the perianal region it crosses the ischiorectal fossa and has a higher internal opening into the rectum uh, and supra sphincteric is when uh, as sir had said a u shaped fistula so it will uh, have an internal opening in the in uh, in mostly at the dentate line which is the usual side uh, and uh, it will uh, pass above the levator and i muscle uh, and then open externally in the perianal region uh, um so these are the various types of uh, classification of fistula and sub classifications uh, in the intersphincteric um, fistula uh, most common is the intersphincteric fistula followed by the transphincteric transphincteric in intersphincteric we have uh, simple which uh, i just described it has an external opening and it only crosses the internal sphincter then we have an have a high blind tract yes go back yes that's what i was talking about do you understand and what is the cause of this fistula commonly these two are commonest uh this is uh, the cause is a perianal abscess no that is fine first no doubt about it what is the cause for this um. somebody is talking to you <laughs> you can take, whoever is tell let her answer is, yeah sweta answer it no problem this is open session no don't worry dheeme thi bolvani kya zarur che so causes are two the first cause is patient might have been operated for perianal abscess presented with perianal abscess and an incision and drainage is done during that time there might be iatrogenic injury second possibility is that when there is a development of fistula and abscess formation abscess extend on either side as it projecting outside it will project also inside so the actual cavity is large and so it appears like a blind tract once it heals so initially it is a potential cavity but once you drain it it will collapse and convert into that's why it is not a blind tract you can call it residual abscess cavity mm -hmm. and third possibility which is becoming more and more common is because we usually did not see this many things the common is inadvertent use of antibiotic and conservative treatment when the patient has not come earlier it will abscess will extend inside and may present as a complicated fistula why we are seeing more of more complicated fistula is because of the inadvertent use of antibiotic presenting late not going for a surgical or definitive treatment earlier the a3 is extremely rare it's very difficult to but that is what i was talking about when there is a intersphincteric it will extend but it may not injure the pelvic diaphragm mm. so here these are the difficult because when you operate this cases you may injure the diaphragm by yourself the best thing to do in such cases is do either you can go for a what you are going to fancy treatment or you put it keep it open and do only dressing without cutting the sphincter okay continue uh, then uh, uh, the next one is uh, a high end uh, tract which uh, which has a rectal opening um then there can be a high end tract which has a rectal opening but no external opening so there is a fistula which only ha has an internal opening at the dentate line and a rectal opening acha so madam was saying can you call it bilateral horseshoe this one sir horseshoe abscess what do you call this This A four five and six are A four five six is not much problem. Six is a totally different presentation. I will come discuss that. But remember, four and five are actually type of submucous fistula, irrespective. And understand this point. The presentation here is in a PR examination. You will find bulges bulging inside the rectum. 
इनिशियोरेक्टल इट विल बी प्रोजेक्टिंग आउटसाइड ऑन आइदर साइड that will be outside the external sphincter that's why i wanted you to know what is exactly ischiorectal fossa so it will be quite lateral show the ischiorectal fossa again ha ah, that is it. so you understand it will project outside and it gets communicated posteriorly so it is a when it is a, a externally on one side opening and opposite side track it's a bilateral horseshoe this is not horseshoe this is submucus you understand and presentation externally these are difficult fistulas to diagnose externally there may not be anything patient will have a severe pain and when you do pr you will find bulging in a either side of rectum or even both side of rectum so keep this thing in mind the only diagnostic is good pr followed by obviously investigation so one thing you should learn all of you is if patient present with severe perianal pain fever on examination if you do not find any obvious opening or any obvious redness do you understand think of these fistulas which are very difficult to diagnose and treat many a time the collocal collection will be very less in that case you may miss the fistula and treat the patient as a fissure point here is that sometimes because of the you can see the internal opening is near dentate line so it may also present with fissure and they are being treated as a fissure so best ways to diagnose these patients are apart from mri mm -hmm. ultrasound ultrasound we are talking of clinically just investigation fine colonoscopy no no yes. in investigation when you do pr and if you try to find bulging these are the patient where you should go for a sin speculum examination if patient allows it fine otherwise examination under mri yeah. in spite of good mri sometimes this can be missed so in those cases you will find opening when you press if post discharge comes that confirms your diagnosis there will not be anything because you can see it is at least 2 to 2.5 cm deep to it you understand the a5 are most difficult fistula to treat they are most difficult to diagnose and most difficult to treat and a6 are usually secondary to a pelvic pathology very good and excellent excellent the usual cause is either diverticular disease bladder disease or pelvic abscess due to another reason so it is higher up collection is above that and that it present in perianal region we are seeing more of such cases the treatment is incision lower down and incision higher up there is no need to touch the lumen though they are looks very horrible but they are comparatively easy to treat because there is no need to do colostomy and there is no interference with the lumen so these can be treated a6 are not difficult to treat they are difficult to diagnose so the typical diagnostic feature will be what will be the typical diagnostic feature of a6 there will be a discharging uh, uh, there will be an external opening uh, with the past discharge may or may not be remember external opening is not mandatory but there will be redness and presentation like perianal abscess Okay. but that is why the standard perian how will you differentiate that's what i am trying to tell you patient will have uh, uh, pain in the pelvic region as well not only pain that is a classic one important point which is described in the book is such patient are almost always immunocompromised one second symptoms are much much more than signs understand you may not see anything but patient is having a say even up to septicemia the signs are very tachycardia redness may be very minimum but the patient will have a severe tachycardia and some symptoms of either tenesmus that is a difficult in passing stool and urinary complaint and one more condition you should keep in mind is that patient might be having a some past history a known case of diverticular disease patient has been treated for appendicitis or patient has undergone some bladder surgery urinary bladder surgery or those are the cases can present like this okay 
so a1 to a6 all come under uh, intersphincteric category uh, the next is the uh, transphincteric uh, in transphincteric also we can subclassify it into uncomplicated transphincteric and uh, uh, high up tract uh, fistulas so uncomplicated is as shown in b1 uh, it passes through the internal and external sphincter so what what we normally call unilateral horseshoe if it is there that is a transphincteric it is arising from ischio rectal abscess area and going like that that the other one what you are saying b2 is a there should be actually b1 a and b this is one side there can be both side there may not be side channels you understand the same principle apply here b uh, the next is uh, um supra sphincteric um, it uh, crosses the internal uh, sphincter passes above the levator muscle and then uh, opens uh, in the perianal region as an external opening so should i continue yeah yeah continue continue sir i think he's on phone uh the last category is extra uh, sphincteric uh an extra sphincteric fistula can develop uh, following a transsphincteric uh, fistula extension basically uh, an extra sphincteric uh, fistula has to cross the ischio rectal space uh, and the levator ani muscle uh, and open high up in the rectum so it can occur uh, following a transsphincteric fistula or it can occur primarily following hydrogenic injury foreign body uh, or uh, some pelvic disease uh, another classification for uh, fistula is uh, high versus low fistulas uh, which is based on the internal opening uh, if the internal opening is the inner rectal ring uh, we will uh, classify them as high Uh, lying fistulas and if it is below the inorectal ring ring it will be low lying um simple versus complex is based on the level at which the primary tract crosses the sphincter presence of secondary extensions and difficulties faced in the treatment so if uh, uh, there is presence of secondary extensions uh, they will classify it as a complex fistula and if it is a single tract with a sim with a single uh, internal and a single external opening uh, we can call it as a simple fistula um moving on to the clinical assessment um uh, first is uh, history uh, which we have discussed the chief complaints uh, the second is physical examination uh, in physical examination uh, the main aim is to identify the external and the internal openings uh, to uh, judge the course of the primary and the secondary tracts to assess the tone of the anal sphincter and uh, assessment uh, for digital rectal examination and enoscope uh, can be done as an opd procedure um so on uh, external opening is something that we will uh, be yeah, able to why you used word enoscope and not proctoscope um the proctoscope is longer than an enoscope so you don't need longer one no sir proctoscope will also come no will means you have to be very sure what is full form of dre digital rectal examination okay there is also one word is a direct rectal examination what is difference so ideally you should write down proctoscope it is a because you beforehand you know that it will be below the only in anus no sir it can be what is the length of anoscope uh 4 cm um For so you will not see all the thing six yes centimeter. books are saying that most of the fistula are below the 4 cm but you should say a proctoscope on second the digital rectal examination fine but what is direct rectal there was a lot of you were present in that case or not last friday in yes that, sir uh, chennai master class and yes sir in girish is 
So the point, huh, in, not in Giris, the next case. Yes, sir. So what is that? Is that sometimes some examiner may ask you. So what he was suggesting is what we say, Cusco's by by speculum. Hmm. That use a Cusco speculum to identify the, because anosco and proctoscope may not be able to identify the problem. That, that means mucosa will fall on, fall on its own and you, it may be hidden by primary piles. So to identify the internal opening, proctoscope is not the ideal thing. Yes, DRE is much better. That is either digital rectal examination or direct rectal examination. The problem with direct rectal examination is that it is very painful and may not be allowed by patient. So actually it is a, comes to EUA, examination under anesthesia. Right. So ideally, it is a part of physical examination, but we are not including because of that. But keep this point in mind. There is a something like direct rectal angle because the, sometimes openings are not seen by proctoscope or anoscope. Better is digital rectal examination may show it as a dimpling or anything. The problem is that many times simple dimple may look like a right uh, opening. Second point is that sometimes proctoscopy and DRE is not possible. What will you do in that case? Because of the severe pain, it may not be possible. You understand? So again, you should keep UA in the mind. Okay. <coughs> um, uh, on physical examination, the external opening is identified as a small pit, uh, which can be surrounded by a scar and it can present with active discharge. Um, um, as a general uh, statement, intersphincteric tracts open close to the anal verge and transphincteric tracts open further away. Uh, uh, in some cases, when multiple external openings are present, that is known as a water can perineum. Uh, on digital rectal examination, an internal opening is felt. Activate, wait. See, water can perineum word is used only if it is because of the urinary fistula. Uh, even if there is a multiple openings surrounding the anal canal and it is dish, it is having perianal fistula, water can perineum word is not used. Right? So this should not be used in perianal fistula. Okay. Um, the internal on digital rectal examination, the internal opening uh, is felt on the uh, finger as an indurated nodule. Uh, it is mostly felt at the dentate line and uh, use of uh, saline uh, dye or hydrogen peroxide can be done. It is injected into the external opening to localize the internal opening. Um, this is, um, th uh, this figure shows multiple external openings with multiple cetons in place. Uh, the site of the internal opening based on the site of the external opening can be uh, judged by uh, application of good cells law. Uh, it uh, suggests that um, a transverse inner line is defined anterior to which uh, if the external opening is present anterior to the transverse inner line, it will open via a straight track uh, into the uh, uh, anal canal and uh, the external openings that lie posterior to the transverse anal line will uh, open via a curved track in the posterior midline. But there is an exception to the good cells law, which states that uh, an external opening present anterior to the transverse anal line, but which is three centimeter away from the anal verge, will open posteriorly via a curved track. It will not enter via a curved track, it will enter uh, via a curved track in the posterior midline. Why this law, law was invented? Uh, to judge the site of the internal opening. No, no. There is only one answer beta to that is to harass the residents. I'm not, I'm not joking. It has no value. Understand this point. Nowadays it does not follow. The reason is very simple as I have already said you. That the patient present after antibiotic, various treatment, resurgery, this, that. So good cell flow has no value. So why he observed these things? What was the reason? The reason is very simple. It is an anatomical description. Because the potential ischiorectal space are posteriorly on either side. 
so there is a lot of space to enlarge before it opens inside because of the abscess so usually the posterior abscess is developed in rectal fossa and they open in posterior midline as madam has said there is a potential area there with communicating with outside it goes there and communicate with that similarly comes from outside where the anterior abscess is does not have a potential space because there are more of a muscle less of the free space so there is no space for expanding the abscesses so they usually remain straight but if the abscess develops laterally there is a space so it will travel along the ischio rectal and goes posteriorly so technically it is right now if somebody ask you you should know the good cells row but there is a very minimum importance of that the only significance of good cells row you should keep in mind is that if you find any external opening beyond 2.5 cm always consider it as a, it may be a complex fissure anterior or posterior okay uh, moving on to the investigations um one is you know, it, it it doesn't come under investigation but examination under anesthesia can be done if uh, uh, we uh, we are not if we fail to judge all the features of the fistula based on physical examination it's a good investigation you should keep in mind as we include diagnostic laparoscopy more and more similarly eua should also be used uh, the reason is no other investigation gives you exact idea of sphincter and always almost always examination under anesthesia should be done under short general anesthesia why in all tone sir under ga exactly to assess the sphincter spinal is poor judge mm -hmm. so particularly in a cases where you cannot find internal opening or patient has been previously operated there is lot of fibrosis more than one fistula outside and recurrent fistulas are the cases where eua has a value it can be done simple eua or along with that injection of the dye because when you do inject the dye at the time of definitive surgery there may be surprises i would not recommend because some are doing it but you will should never say that is a putting a feeding tube in opd basis i, I have seen quite a number of surgeons they put a feeding tube in external opening in opd and try to find the in internal opening that that is what is the disadvantage of that it should never be done it can cause development of false tracts exactly it will create a false spaces and simple fistula may be converted into complex third it may not allow you to reach up to internal opening because of the if it is a transsphincteric fistula most of the time sphincter will prevent passage of that you understand so it should never be done similarly dye should not be introduced in opd if at all you want you should do is a dye fistulogram but don't do that op it is a introducing of feeding tube or dye in opd is not part of examination do not say it. sigmoidoscopy and colonoscopy uh, it can be done to detect presence of associated pathologies such as uh, neoplasms or inflammatory bowel diseases uh, uh, gives by in action pain yes good histiography <laughs> <laughs> uh, can be done uh, to identify the internal opening that is the we inject the dive to the external opening and exit is that taken to identify the internal opening uh, another is endoluminal usg which we also known as no stance rectal endoscopy um in which the fistula tract or an abscess appears as a hypoechoic or defect within the muscular and during the procedure hydrogen peroxide can be injected by the external opening it will enhance the fistula tract as we can see in this uh next investigation that can be done is mri no, no, go back that's we little bit back okay what you have said endoluminal us what we used to call tross actually right 
the difference here is we are using a standard soft tissue probe which is introduced to rectal probe actual endolumen usg is for higher up like a us that's a different thing that will come in picture rare cases when you are suspecting other pathology but here normally what we do is a truss better word is transrectal sonography which is a special probe is there but it is not as complicated or very costly probe as what you call endoluminal us this is only rectal probe or vaginal probe like that the importance of that is how will you what will you identify in this you have written very well but what are the conditions which will be useful or you to identify like uh, the um, we can identify uh, the plane in which the abscess is present so remember it has a more importance for a abscess rather than fistula as you remember i told you that the fistula uh, abscesses which are deep seated hmm. there is no external mark of any opening or a trap in those cases this is a must investigation which will show you site of abscess extent of abscess and whether it is a opening internally or not for a common fistula when there is external opening and there is internal opening truss has a limited value so keep that in mind it is to identify the hidden hidden collections that the truss has a most important go yeah go on uh, mri is uh, useful uh, in complex fistulas for identification of secondary extension and internal and uh, internal openings uh, so as we can see in this mri film uh, there are multiple tracks uh, that are showed by the arrows in bilateral ischiorectal space um ct uh, i think i saw it by intentionally did not take it you should have included scent marks classification what is that yeah, i haven't read it you should read it there is a mri classification which grade the fistula into 1 2 3 4 4 depends upon the complexity of the fistula grade 1 and 2 are a simple fistula we come across 3 and 4 are complex fistula usually four fistula grade 4 fistula almost always required either stomy seton or a multiple surgeries grade 3 is a variable but you should read it i think i have got it i will forward you later on right but you should know what is scent marks classification of mri i recommend all the resident to read it it will be useful and some examiner may ask you sometime even for your the reading of mri it is important and ideally you should ask all the radiologists that you should give report in a, that manner that which scent mark classification it falls into it is 1 2 3 4 like that okay. and ct scan is almost always not to be done in pure fistula you know except go um it is uh, uh, except when there is an pelvic pathology suspected or uh, in yeah. patient with supra levator abscesses hmm. uh, right manometry uh, is uh, done to identify patients that have a greater risk of post operative incontinence um right. so for usually is, not done usually not done it is done you should say when there is a associated facial pathology of prolapse rectum or mucosal prolapse or again multiple surgery here it may be needed because of the reason is that when there are multiple surgery sphincter damage is there but we are unable to assess it because of fibrosis and once you operate once the fibrosis go patient may develop incontinence so actually identify whether it is a only fibrosis which is preventing incontinence or is it a actual sphincter damage and in case of rectal prolapse there may be associated fistula so if you operate in such cases the fistula surgery incontinence is more likely right because remember in such cases at least you may damage the lower internal and external sphincter both so the borderline cases may go for incontinence where you should do a manometry and identify even people recommend in a prolapse rectum if there is a fistula you should always go for a pre operative muscle strengthening exercise explain to the patient and then only go for a surgery fistuloscopy is like a ductoscopy mm. yes great yes. uh, flexible ureteroscopes are used it is still still under uh, development it's development not. it has not added advantage much over mri unless a patient had a post trauma and you are suspecting 
some foreign body or similar condition, but otherwise it is not done commonly. Okay. Um, differential diagnosis uh, for uh, fistula in ano can be hydrogenitis separativa, which is uh, um, which is uh, due to uh, in it is due to infection of the uh, epocrine uh, sweat glands in the perianal skin. Uh, then infected inclusions is pyelonidal sinus and Bartholin's gland abscess in females. Uh, so externally, uh, uh, just by physical examination, these conditions can be taken as a differential diagnosis. Uh, moving on to the treatment, um, fistula requires surgical treatment. Uh, they do not heal spontaneously. One thing you are not taken again is what are the complications? Patients say, I am having fistula, no problem. Why should I go undergo surgery? Um, sir, they can develop chronic abscesses or uh, multiple. From a simple fistula can... Yeah, itself is a chronic abscess. Question is, what are the long-term complications of fistula if untreated? This is the common question asked by patient. Secondary extensions can occur. It can turn very good. Complex. The simple fistula may be converted into complex fistula because the abscess will occur deeper and deeper and it will core it. One. So you should know the complication is simple fistula converted into complex fistula. What else? Uh, it can lead to chronic discharge from the side, can cause perianal skin. Skin excoriation and problem. Okay. The question is, can it convert into malignancy or not? Yes, sir. But uh, at least a ten, for, when the fistula is present for at least 10 years only after yes. that, there is a risk of... Risk of because this is the common question asked. What are the complications of fistula on its own? The commonest complications are extension into deeper tissue. Second, rare possibility of malignancy. Third is a repeated reactivation, any patient become immunocompromised can convert into what you call is a fornier's gangrene. These are the point you should keep in mind, skin excoriation and that is all right. Discomfort, skin excoriation and one more is a fibrosis leading to stricture, you know, stricture formation. Okay. Um, goals of the treatment are to cure the disease, prevent recurrence and preserve continence. Uh, there are several treatment modalities, uh, fistulotomy, fistulectomy, seton placement, which can be either a draining seton or a cutting seton, uh, fibrin glue injection, fistula plug, endorectal advancement, flap surgery, ligation of intersphincter fistula tract and video assisted anal fistula treatment. Uh, we will be discussing them one by one. Okay. Uh, fistulotomy. Uh, fistulotomy, uh, basic, uh, it means uh, laying open the tract. Um, the indication for fistulotomy is intersphincteric and low transphincteric fistula. Um, we pass a probe from the external opening into the internal opening and the tract is uh, laid open above the probe uh, and the tissue, uh, the entire gr granulation tissue is curated out and sent for histopathology and the wound edges are trimmed. If there is presence of secondary tracts, it is drained via the fistulotomy incision and uh, marsupialization can be done with a running continuous suture. Uh, it will uh, help in faster healing of the... How? How will it help in faster healing? Uh, sir, because it will... If uh, um, the marsupialization will prevent... Uh, uh, re uh, it will prevent... Uh, mm, uh, it will prevent uh, collection, re collection, re of the. No, we want re epithelization. As in, sir, it will prevent that um, re repeat a repeat episode of a collection. There will be no. But why the basic principle of that? When you do fistulotomy, you do not cut skin. Do you understand? That is the difference between fistulectomy and fistulotomy. The skin is lying there only, like this. So, if you do not do marsupialization in a large fistula, it will fall on its own and the healing of skin occurs without healing from death. Hmm. It does not allow because the skin will fall on its again. So, you do marsupialization so that skin remain unclosed. 
that is the principle of fissure which is usually used when you have done a larger fissulotomy in a small fissulotomy it doesn't make much but the basic thing in fissulotomy we also cut the skin so usually skin flap does not fall on its own but in fissulotomy skin flaps are normal so that is the problem you should keep it in mind yes uh, and uh, in case of transfingric uh, fistulas when fistula fistulotomy is done we have to um, after passing the probe uh, we have to judge if enough uh, muscle of the external sphincter is present above the probe or not if there is um, only if uh, a small amount of muscle is present um, so the external to the probe only then we should go for fistulotomy otherwise it will have more risk of incontinence so how Which, much sphincter you can cut how much sphincter you can cut um subcutaneous part of external sphincter can be cut what else one point what else you can cut not only there are two up to lower two part of external sphincter and internal sphincter you can cut upper part of external sphincter and the anorectal ring which is between 4 to 6 cm you should not cut so any internal opening below 4 cm you can safely cut but the problem is that if it is a straight if it goes like a u or there are side track you should be careful those are the we'll discuss the disadvantage of fistulotomy one more point you should i didn't remember here is that always recommend injection of dye how will you do remember i think you have taken it it's a part of operative procedure whether you do fistulotomy you do fistulectomy whatever you do why it is important to inject the dye um because of uh, by if there are multiple tracks the yeah, there, even if there is a single track always inject the dye uh because on passing the probe uh, um, we might even create a false passage But the if probing are... should not be done without actually injection of dye. The one more point important is when you inject the dye, you can inject directly syringe, or you uh, now you can use feeding tube. Nothing wrong with that, and along with feeding tube, with dye, some people also put a small drops of H two O two, which gives good access because the small track dye may not go, but the H two O two create the oxygen which will seen as a bubble from internal opening. So it's a good idea. You should always use methylene blue with a little bit of H two O two. One more point: when you inject it, when you are injecting for a some time, you should always close the potential site of internal opening. So the pressure of dye will find out other site tracks also. However good probing you are doing, if you do not know internal opening, you may miss it and recurrence rate increases. or you may create a false passage continue um so basically there is a direct relation between amount of transaction of external sphincter and incontinence uh next is fistulectomy uh, fistulectomy involves excision of the whole fistula tract uh, which can also be called as coring out of the fistula Uh, go back go back fistulectomy what is fistulectomy uh, fistulectomy involves excision of the entire tract so uh, no it, entire tract how do you do um so after insertion of the probe uh, we have to uh, dissect uh, circumferentially around the probe we we don't just So remember, fistulectomy uh, means we, new and uh, fistula. What is the other name for that? Remove the that? entire tract as a whole. Coring out. The word which is used is coring out. Coring out. Coring out. All three sixty degree of fistula is with surrounding fat is removed. You understand? So it has a distinct advantage that you do not leave behind any wall or infected area. What is disadvantage? uh la it will form a larger raw area so very good one second um more chance of in the more chance of damage to oh, the sphincter definitely so. yes it definitely increase the chances of sphincter injury is likely any other 
disadvantage <laughs> more bleeding because you are going through the normal areas so sometimes fistulectomy gives lot of bleeding which is very very less in case of fistulectomy what is the advantage of fistulectomy uh, less chances of recurrence um, less yeah. chances of recurrence anything else you take a whole specimen hmm. and it is quite useful particularly in a long long fistula so how it has a definite advantage so fistulotomy once you do you do not close usually because you are lay behind the abscess wall which is thick and fibrous wall mm -hmm. when the fistula is very long if you try to do fistulotomy very large row area is created so what we do in a long we core out the fistula by putting a skin incision and close this area so most of the fistula tract can be closed if you have done a fistulectomy so in a long fistula fistulectomy is the rule so you can close it and avoid the very large row areas so that is in the reverse it is advantage in long fistula it will clear the smaller row areas but if you have done a fistulotomy very long area and unlikely to be closed because you are living behind that you have to scoop it out and do a daily dressing which is fistulot in fistulotomy you can avoid and close suppose there is a fistula is 10 cm external opening is 10 cm away we have seen in thigh we have seen in buttocks so you put as incision core out the fistula only keep the internal opening area near rectum as a open and the rest of the tract you can close so that is a distinct advantage of fistulotomy and that is a standard procedure in a long fistula Yes. Uh, Ceton placement. Uh, Ceton is uh, the word is derived from a Latin word ceta, which means bristle. What uh, is bristle? Uh, so bristles are like the bristles of the brush. Those small thin wire. Yes. Bristle is a small wire. The Ceton word has come from that. I think I asked my resident, but they never answered me. Panchin pachi kayud nahi man. श्वेता डिडंट आई आस्क आई थिंक कौस्तुब ने श्वेता ने खबर जो आई आस्क यस सर यस सर बट यू नेवर आंसर्ड मी दैट तो भूली गया साहब तो बीजा दिवस भूली जाए એટલે કઈ વાંધો નહીં ઓકે સો ઇટ ઇઝ અ ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ ધ પોઈન્ટ ઇઝ ધેટ એક્ચ્યુઅલ સેટોન વોઝ નોટ અ વેરી સોફ્ટ સિલ્ક વોટ વી આર યુઝિંગ વી હેવ સીન વાયર એઝ અ સેટોન ઓલ્સો એન્ડ ધેર ઇઝ અ ડિસ્ટિંક એડવાન્ટેજ ઓફ ધેટ યુ કેન સિમ્પલી रोल करो ग्रेजुअली इट विल कट बट वी डो नॉट यूज इट रीजन इज अनकंफर्टेबल फॉर द पेशेंट अनकंफर्टेबल एंड परसिस्टेंट इन्फेक्शन बिकॉज इज मोर ऑफ अ फॉरेन बॉडी सेंसेशन सो यूजली इट इज नॉट डन बट ओरिजिनली दैट वॉज द आइडिया प्लास्टिक टाइप और अ वायर टाइप सो यू कैन जस्ट पुल इट हियर वी हैव टू पुट अ नॉट एवरी डे दैट इज द पॉइंट सो सेट ऑन वर्ड हैज कम फ्रॉम दैट यस Uh, it is inserted into the fistula tract to encircle the sphincter muscles the materials used are uh, silk um, penrose drain can be used elastic vessel loops rubber bands nylon or polypropylene very good you can also use word umbilical cord are umbilical tape tap sorry cord umbilical tap that also can be used Uh, an ideal ceton is non absorbable non degradable and comfortable to the patient and minimum reaction um cetons are useful in uh, no forget it what did i say was it a right or wrong word which i have used i intentionally use it you say non absorbable non degradable comfortable and minimum reaction is it a right word or wrong do you understand my question why it is not written that it should cause the reaction that's why silk is always better than nylon and polypropylene okay. that will cause good fibrosis good healing so we don't want minimum reaction we do want tissue reaction understand this point if somebody must ask why we do use silk more commonly nylon we usually use for a draining set on mm. cutting says on silk it will cause more fibrosis because it will cause more tissue reaction that is one more reason why it is not used common because we don't want only cutting we want healing and fibrosis so keep that that's why intentionally there is no word minimum reaction mm. uh ceton's are uh, useful in the management of complex enorrheic 
rectal fistulas uh, with risk of incontinence and poor healing such as in patients with crohn's disease in immunocompromised patient and patients with incontinence yes uh, it can be used in four ways uh, a marking sit on draining sit on cutting sit on and staging sit on very good excellent so marking sit on is to assess the amount of muscle that the fistula tract is crossing uh, sometimes when we cannot assess it by other methods a sit on is passed and uh, we can judge the amount of muscle Uh, whether we can do fistulotomy or not can be judged um then draining setons are loose setons uh, they provide long term drainage uh, of uh, oh, marking seton will also be part of your eua sometime yes if you are not sure whether it is high low where is the sphincter particular previous surgery is done you can simply put a seton as a marker and once the patient is out of anesthesia you can re examine so ua is a important investigation keep that thing in mind okay um a draining sit on provides a long long term drainage of uh, pus and uh, it can be used uh, it can be used before several procedures such as it can be used before fistulectomy or advancement flat surgery or cutting sit on placement to uh, tide over the acute uh, uh, separative stage or uh, it can be used in uh, uh, patients of such as crohn's disease which or in patients with multiple tracts multiple draining setons can be kept for continuous drainage of uh, pus um, a cutting seton is um, used to gradually transect the sphincter muscles by a process of ischemic necrosis uh, it is also called as cheese wiring through ice uh, and uh, it uh, pro- promotes fibrosis so cutting and healing occurs simultaneously uh, the seton is tightened at a regular two week interval mm. and it will promote fibrosis in the line where it cuts mm. uh, the f- uh, fourth so is actually remember there are actually two seton draining and cutting they are basically depends upon these two the marking setons will be converted into either draining seton or cutting seton in second stage or in rare circumstances they are removed the principally you have said why we do put a set on understand this point actually marking and staging are same not much of a difference hmm. so why we put a set on um so in high lying fistulas or in complex fistulas where uh, surgeries like fistulectomy fistulotomy cannot be done um so the simple answer when there are chances of injury to sphincter hmm. in those cases we put a set on that is for a cutting set on what about draining set uh, if there is a collection uh, with along with the fistula tract which re- so like before we go for a definitive surgery also we can put a draining set on to drain all the for continuous drainage of the pus and later on once uh, a certain amount of healing has occurred we can go for a definitive Plan second off. second important point most of the time we put a draining set on along with cutting set on understand this point isolated draining set on is very rare we usually put it along with the cutting set on the principle here is that principle here is that when you put a set on there might be side tracks there might be small collection we need to do a dressing so the draining seton will give you the one idea that side tracks are or the side collection are kept open and is dressed because the cutting seton will not be able to do this one second reason is cutting seton we applied very snugly drainage seton is free usually it is a nylon commonly used because we don't need a fibrosis from draining seton we need fibrosis and healing from cutting so we usually use silk for that right but chances are that sit silk may cut through so you will never know whether the cutting set on had completely brought down the track or it has cut in between and some part of the steel track is persistent but the draining set on once it comes out along with the cutting set on that means the complete cutting is done properly so it is also as a marking set on 
that is the one more use of a marking saton which is also acting as a draining saton that means that will act as a marker okay, yes the you are not touching the draining saton you go on cutting one fine morning silk is in your hand but how will you be sure whether you have completely cut or it, it the suture has given way mm -hmm. in that case if the draining saton has also come out that means sphincter is properly cut and healed but if markings a cutting saton comes out draining saton is still inside what will you do we can reapply yes yeah, so it will also use as a reapplication uh, railroading and railroading can be done so that is so they are overlapping that's why i use word draining and cutting are the two important marking and staging they are overlapping you are not sure whether the which stage it is you apply the marking saton sometimes you are not doing ua you want to know whether it then you put it as a draining saton cutting saton is a definitive surgery understand all three are may or may not be complete surgery on its own but when you apply cutting saton that means you are definitely doing definitive surgery for tissue yes. one more point is the saton what we use is a different than saton ayurvedic people are using what is the difference you also call it as kshar sutra mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some examiner may ask you actually i was asked this question in my exam when i appeared for ms the point there is that they are not using for high or low they use for any fistula and they commonly use in the low fistula and they use it to create a fibrosis they do not use cutting set on most of the time it is kept loose and after some time they remove it or replace it the principle there is a different their principle is not cutting their principle is to create irritation and fibrosis inside the tract so the granulation and pus will be drained and it will be replaced by a fibrous tissue so when you remove the set the kshar sutra it will heal so principle is different though they, so you cannot call that as a true set um staging set on is it is called an um after, oh, it's cool. Done. Okay. um this is a diagram showing a set on placement so the diagram is wrong go back why this is low line yeah. ideally there is no need to do set on in this case uh, so ideally. it is giving wrong wrong message yes. this is what the i will people do set is right rubber band char sutra we apply it little higher up there is no need of set on below the dented line understand this point and what it is shown ha that is the little lower that is the site where it is required the biggest advantage of set on is it avoids colostomy in a 40 50% of cases that is the real advantage of set on here there is no purpose of putting set on this is what i was talking about char sutra continue uh some newer methods are uh, one is fibrin glue injection uh, so a mixture of fibrinogen and thrombin is injected into the fistula tract after it has been curated um another is fistula plug an anal fistula plug is a bioprosthetic material uh, mostly porcine intestinal submucosa is used or a synthetic absorbable material can be used um this diagram shows how it is placed uh, uh, so basically it is a uh, it is placed from the internal opening uh, and uh, the the, the uh, guide wire is passed from the external to the internal opening and then the uh, plug is uh, um, placed on the internal opening and sutured there uh, and it will act as a scaffolding for a native tissue growth Uh, and advancement uh, an an indirect advancement flap will consist of a of mucosa sub mucosa and part of the internal sphincter um, in uh, this procedure um, we basically the uh, flap Beta, this, is, this is good this is good but the problem here is this is not a surgery on its own most of the time this basically is done to prevent the fibrosis and crypt formation 
it is usually used when there are recurrent surgery has already been done and it is not a surgery on its own for a fistula understand this point it is usually associated with some other surgery hmm. Hmm. um so a flap is raised which consists of these three layers mucosal so the last word is most important forget about this last line is most important what is that last line um in uh, in patients with uh, high lying fistula or in patients uh, in which previous surgery has been done a lot of scarring dense is scarring dense scarring that is the usual reason this procedure is done we do anocutaneous when the fistula surgery is followed by recurrence with stricture in those cases we do what we call is a yv plasty you must have seen it or read it that is the same principle advancement of anocutaneous fish flap okay um the method is ligation of intersynthetic fistula tract in which an incision is placed uh, in the uh, at the site where at the on the perianal skin uh, at the site uh, between the two sphincters and uh, the tract uh, is probed before the surgery so uh, it can be identified and uh, separated from the surrounding tissue and it is ligated cut and ligated the internal opening is ligated and uh, the external tract can be uh, it uh, a fibrin glue injection can be done along with this procedure this is all these are done to prevent the large wound and early recovery that is the only but the recurrence rate is comparatively higher you should keep in mind uh, a newer method is video assisted anal fistula treatment uh, in which a fistuloscope is used uh, to identify the internal opening and a stippler is placed on the internal opening and the entire tract is coagulated yes this is right one more advantage of lift what we do is uh, sometimes it can be done uh, if the fistula is higher up and you do go on fistulectomy you can what you can do is go right up to the open internal opening take a cuff of rectum along with the fistula and close the cuff of rectum inside there that's that will prevent the large wound to happen and the closure is done that is the commonly approach method for a many senior surgeons even people have tried laparoscopically this thing understand this is what is a video assisted that is the same thing is done that way the principal difference is here we do not like it the track we like it the opening in the rectum that is what is a staple is closed is the same principle waft is that is advancement of a lift which can be done video assisted or you can do by open method also that is instead of because the taking a suture will be difficult small stapler but the problem with stapler is it itself can cause a recurrence so you can use a absorbable pds suture material to close the internal opening post operative complications uh, are urinary retention is the most common other complications are uh, hemorrhage uh, cellulitis in the surrounding uh, skin uh, subcutaneous tissue fecal impaction Uh, structure formation incontinence and recurrence sorry okay yes this uh, the what is the most important complication ideally you should divide into two part early and late uh, incontinence and recurrence are delayed uh, no they are the main two complications all other are okay understand this point recurrence and incontinence these are the two you can call it i always very fond of calling them double edged sword what is that ek baju khai aur ek baju kuwa what is that khadda aur khai if we go for a more radical approach it will cause recurrence will be late but incontinence will occur if you do two less there will be a recurrence no incontinence so what will you choose that was the actual question a recurrence over incontinence to yes. so understand if somebody ask you this tricky question sir i would always go for a recurrence because somebody else can do a better job than me that is the need if the point here is that so the sphincter saving is the most important point in fistula surgery mm -hmm. understand this point it should be so any day recurrence is accepted incontinence should not occur so you are all at motive that's why set on and that 
one more surgery which you have not discussed is in a pump fistula in you know because the point is that we never do it in our unit that is the problem colostomy do not forget the colostomy so what are the indication of colostomy in fistula surgery uh, multiple uh, complex uh, if there is a multi multiple tracts and a complex fistula is present um, with uh, active uh, suppuration then we can go for a diverting uh, colostomy obvious always diverting that is the point but real indication are one trauma understand this point very complex trauma leading to fistula where the you do not know status of sphincter and you do not try to do anything in those cases diverting colostomy is the answer second is a uh, associated with generalized if patient is having a multiple fistula with tuberculosis temporary diversion may be helpful for the patient third if if the internal opening is more than 1.5 to 2 cm in diameter so most of the time stool may come from there obviously high i am talking of higher fistula right and the fourth is a recurrent fistula with stricture formation and same will go, there are two indication of permanent colostomy in a rare circumstances total incontinence with complete destruction of sphincter one and second because of multiple fistula surgery complete stricture formation at lower end which cannot be cured those are two rare but those are the indication of permanent colostomy also but the important these all are that cellulitis hemorrhage impaction sticks but the important is a incontinence and recurrence okay fine done yes <coughs> good you did good thank you taru karu ne apurva good it was good presentation yes sir definitely there was definitely definitely also okay yes. so saturday dr parth i don't think he, i don't see him here i am trying to see him parth are you there નો સર યસ યસ બો કામ હતું આ યુનિટ માં સર ટુડે કે મજા મંગળવાર ને એટલે ઓકે એનીવે ટેલ હિમ ધેટ બી પ્રિપેર્ડ એન્ડ શો મી એટ લીસ્ટ વન ડે બીફોર યસ સર ઓકે મી ઓર હિઝ સર વો હુ મે મરી વોન્ટ્સ ઓકે થેન્ક યુ થેન્ક યુ સર થેન્ક યુ